Hey guys, how's it going? Today we have a bunch of things to put in the ground, including a couple of obelisks for some climbing roses. We've got some perennials that are new for next year, and we've got a few shrubs to put in the pond area. It should be a wonderful afternoon. It's so nice out here today. Oh, here is our menagerie of stuff. Right here we've got some uh, pineapple lilies. So these are new for next year. They're called Purple Rain. They're so pretty. And there's another one called Princess Bride. So this one has like lavender pink flowers. The other one has kind of tropical pink with a little bit of like yellow and apricot mixed in. But these have their really beautiful deep colored leaves. And they grow like 18 to 20 inches tall and I think two feet wide because they are brand new. And I've actually not grown this type of plant before. I'm not sure. Let's see, yeah, two feet wide. They are a zone six through nine. It says they bloom midsummer through fall and that they're pretty adaptable to different soil pH. So as long as they can make it through our winter, which we are technically a zone six now, we used to be a zone five, but they should, I'm hoping do okay here. So we'll find a spot for these. I think we've got two, four, five, six, seven of those to put in the ground. And then you can see the obelisks here. I think these are seven footers. They've been in the barn for a while. Um, so they're nice and dusty, but I busted them out because we have two climbing roses that actually came in a load from heirloom roses earlier on this season. They're called the Impressionist. Oh my goodness, are they ever beautiful too. This is what they look like when they bloom, and I did get to see some blooms off of those this summer. Poor things have been just sitting in their little one gallon containers all summer long waiting for a spot. And I intended on putting them on an arbor somewhere, but I don't have an arbor right now, but I do have these obelisks, which I lost the bottom off of one, it looks like. Where'd it go? I'm gonna have to go track that down. <laughs> probably on my way out here. It's probably sitting on the side of the road somewhere. We have one of these on the west side of our house with a teasing Georgia, I think. It's a yellow David Austin climber rose and it's done great. We do have to keep it pruned and it's something with these, like this rose in particular will get like 10 feet, I think, eight to 10 feet, somewhere around there, um, tall. And then it would grow out wide if we trained it that way. But you can keep them in these obelisks knowing that you're gonna have to do some trimming on them because it's not a huge area for them to ramble but it makes it so nice to be able to tuck it into a flower bed somewhere. You don't have to have a huge structure. You just pop one of these in and you get to have that rose interest, that vertical interest, and you get something pretty to look at in the winter time too because the obelisk itself is pretty. They are a zone five through 10 and I don't recall if I actually smelled the blooms of this one when it was blooming out by the high tunnel. Uh, the website says that they are very fragrant, so I'm hoping that that holds true. And then the other thing we are gonna plant is a little dipper, actually three little dipper, Cotoneasters. These are so great and they look so perfect for around the pond area. They kind of have that woodland like undergrowth kind of look. It's a woody shrub you can see right here. Grows about 6 to 12 inches tall as all and 3 to 4 feet wide. So it'll kind of create that ground cover. Little white blooms in the spring followed by red berries which you know they don't perform the same in containers as they will in the ground but you can see a couple. There's a little red berry right there. Here he comes. Aaron's mowing right now. I swear he knows exactly where I'm at. I can always hear that mower approaching. <laughs> approaching. It's always when I'm wanting to share details of plants with you guys. So anyway, that is the order of the day. I'm gonna have to go find the bottom of this obelisk though before we get started. Let's go do that really fast. Here it is. All right. I think I wanna set the first one right in here somewhere. I'm gonna try it in a couple different spots, but I think it will, it'll end up somewhere in here because the, you really can't see any hardscape. It's all plants except for there is an urn. And then we've got our little maiden statue down there. I don't like to have too much too close together in the landscape. I love seeing beautiful pieces, but unless it's a formal design that you've got a very distinct like repeat of something, I don't like to see a menagerie of things. So I try to make sure to spread things out in the, in the flower beds. You can see that urn now. This is the State of Grace Rose, which looks an awful lot like the Impressionist, but this is in a shrub form. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my word, the color. It's that pink apricot, oh, so perfect. And that's our next little piece right there. So I think it's spread out enough. I gotta do something with these sumacs, oh my word. 
that's taking over the land. I did bring my auger out here too. This is the two inch diameter. This is the Laura edition one where the flighting right here is a lot shorter. So it's a lot less heavy. What I will probably have to do is set the obelisk down where I want it and kind of make a little mark in the soil where each leg needs to go in. And then I'll use the auger to make my holes. Uh, so I can slide the obelisk down as far as I need to because this soil is way too hard out here. I can't even get a stake down in it very easily. That's what I do with my tomato cages and it works great. So let's get this placed, get the first rows planted, then I'll show you. guys, I love it right there. That looks so pretty. And I love the fact that the evergreens that are flanking it, so the cedar here, there's a Serbian spruce and there's also Norway spruce in the back, but all of those will not be losing any leaves. They will still be here in the winter time as will the um, weeping white spruce right there. When I initially set it out here though, I put it closer right in this spot, I even dug the holes. And then I thought, no, I've got enough room to push some of those taller things back have it be a little bit more spacious and I can come in with something a little bit taller than like the denim and lace Russian sage, taller than these are the double play dolly, I think Spirea, look at the fall color coming out. Oh my word, that's so pretty. Anyway, just give everything a little bit more space because I wanna say this one like, might get 12 feet. I can't remember, geez, I'm gonna have to look that one up. And the Norway spruce gets a lot wider than that. So anyway, I think in the end, it'll be a happy spot for it. These Vanessa Bells, so we do have roses really close by. These are the ones from the little triangle garden that we had in our driveway, at, you know, where we had the three-tier fountain. And Aaron and I dug these out and had a heck of a time digging them. They were so hard and we barely got any roots, thought they died. All three of them have survived. Roses do really well out here. Such a beautiful color. So I think this one will do nicely. It's already got a little height on it. And I'm thinking the next one's gonna go on the far side. And there's the second obelisk just tucked right in there. Now in front of it, like to the left, this side, there's not a whole lot going on, but we've got some Coreopsis and some Agastache and Daylilies. There's a red bud, a uh, Spring Glory Forsythia, North Pole Arborvita, a European white birch right here. I think having this, just having the obelisk right there is really pretty, but having those orange blooms through the season will be really, really nice. And then we can start working on filling in the rest of this space. Need some kind of like a blue evergreen. We've got the bonnie blue over there, kind of underneath, kind of peeking through. I need something maybe smaller right in here that's got that icy blue. Oh, that just worked out perfectly. Okay, so now we need to go plant the pineapple lilies and the cotoneasters. So let's get that done and then we'll take a little tour.
All right, guys, it's been a couple of hours. I took a break so I could uh, get some things watered and then we had dinner. I think the kids and Aaron are out by the pond getting the fire turned on. Uh, and that's where we're gonna end up to look at the Cotone Asters. But the pineapple lilies ended up out here and I think they're so pretty. And we're just gonna walk this path because it's a beautiful time of night when the sun starts shining through. And I wanted to stop along the way and show you the reminiscent pink roses because when we planted these, they were kind of sad, to be honest with you. And now they are just gorgeous. I wouldn't mind like filling out a whole big swoop, like just keep on going with those. Wouldn't that be beautiful? They come out in like these huge bouquets, just pick one stem and you've got yourself a bouquet. So beautiful. Anyway, as we keep going through, Underneath the arbor here, through the arbor, you can see a little drift of the pineapple lilies. And I think they're gonna be great here because it's a very different texture than anything else that we've got going on in this area. Um, you know, we've got some yellow twig dogwoods, there's a gin fizz juniper and some lamb's ear and some GMs, and we didn't really have anything grassy. So I think this is gonna be great. And it's likely I'll start in with some kind of a vine right here that will sort of fill in and maybe even kind of come over a little bit. So I wanted to make sure not to get too close to the arbor. But I think that that really deep colored foliage looks pretty with that dogwood too. It'll be interesting. Like I said, I've never grown this particular plant before. I don't know a lot about it. Uh, so it's always fun to put those kinds of things in. It's kind of like this Chitalpa. Remember when we planted these? Remember how small they were? <laughs> Look at them. They're just doing so great. They smell so good. This is the El Nino Chitalpa. And see all the buds here getting ready. But I bet you they've doubled, maybe. Maybe we could go back in time and take a look. I wanna say that they've doubled. There's the other two right there. I'm just really thrilled. It's the same kind of situation with the pineapple lilies. When I saw those Chitalpos, I just thought, no, I don't think that they're gonna survive here. You know how you just think that about certain things? And then when they take off and do really well, it's just, I don't know, just I'm so pleased with it. I hope I have the same experience with the pineapple lilies. All right, well, the kids and Aaron have not made it out here yet, but Russell has. Hey, bud. And I'm so excited about these Katoni asters. I think they're gonna be gorgeous. So here's one right there. So like I said, six to 12 inches tall, three to four feet wide. So I kind of want it to hug the corner of that rock. And there's a little bit of an, a decline right here. So I'm hoping it kind of spills over. Kind of hope the same thing for all of these. You can see this one right here. Won't that be gorgeous right here? I almost kind of want to get like, I don't know. It'd be pretty to do more. And then there's our third one, tucked in right behind that little trio of rocks, hoping for it to do the same thing and kind of soften the edges of the rocks. You can see we've got some leaves that have started to fall. And I think I'll go ahead and get this going. We love ending the day out here by the pond. We're out here almost every single night. I'm gonna probably go make a cup of coffee, find everybody, and then we'll end up back out here uh, just enjoying this whole space. And the weather's still so nice that we don't even need coats out here or sweaters or anything. It's just absolutely beautiful. Anyway, wonderful planting day. Just had the best time getting those plants put in the ground. And I know that they're probably thankful to be out of their containers. Here they come. You want marshmallows? Yeah. Oh. Tasty. Would it be tasty? It'd be tasty? Yeah. All right, guys, we will see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye.